So in many respects, you actually, as a painter, started off in a different trajectory to what usually seems to happen in my experience, which is uh, often painters start off with figurative work. Um, they start off with drawing, often, mm -hmm. um, move through the figurative kind of work, and then it tends to become more abstracted as, um, I suppose, the you know, figuration starts to feel like it sort of restricts yeah. you know, their expression so they tend to move more into mm. the abstract. You know? yes. The um, thing about Max Presnell's book was pretty much that kind of trajectory. But you, in a way you've actually, I suppose you started off with the abstract, got into the figurative and then kind of, mm. it's, just, it's a line that you yeah. cross back into. I do, I do. And um, I wonder if it's to do with certain types of movement in my life as well. Yeah. So I find that there is um, um, there's just times when going back to a more I guess realistic way of working has to do with maybe even going more into a more substance or more dense way of being. If that makes any sense. And when it's um, very um, abstract or open, you know, there is a lot more um, just openness and things are kind of more, yeah, open in the feeling and in the energy of things. Um, but there was a big shift in 2015 when all the work, when I remember I still really wanted to do this, be this proper kind of figurative painter. And then I did a residency in Sydney in the bush in the Blue Mountains and um, there were some works that were coming out there they were already more loose or more different and then um, there was a big then in 2016 there was um, the separation from the long-term um, partner mm. and you know like for an artist or I guess any artist you know the the personal is always like there is no difference any artist that says that it isn't, I think, is either not trying to tell themselves the truth or not wanting other people to know that it's actually all about them. <laughs> but it is like, you know, we're all trying to be very hard to be so conceptual, but you know, like there is a reason why we're doing it. It's, it's, it's funny, one of the artists that I've interviewed a few times in Los Angeles, Claudia Peducci, says that. You know, you inevitably always end up making work that is about you, yes, whether exactly. you want to or not. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, but that's also the beauty of it because yeah. you, you know, you realize like when you actually, like, you know, inside of us, we, we are not actually separate from other beings either. Yeah. You know, we are all sharing the same pain, we're all sharing the same love, we're all sharing, you know, a collective where we were grow, uh, growing up. So whenever we're expressing something, you know, we're not just expressing ourselves, we're expressing everything, really. Um, but there has been this massive, you know, intellectualization um, about, you know, trying to find a reason why, you know, or what is this work about, and can you talk about this work? And, you know, and I, th I think it's really important to talk about your work and put it into a context and to know where you're coming from and put it into a framework. But also there is nothing wrong at all with just you know really stating this is the truth like you know for me I'm completely painting from my soul this is you know the, this is just me this is where it's coming from so in 2016 when there was a separation interestingly the whole cycle the whole body of work was just all collage and it was all ripping apart it was like it was really violent actually so, you know, looking back, I think, wow, you definitely ripped your life apart there. <laughs> you know, you kind of just went, ah, not doing that, that's shit, you know, this is, yeah. and everything is just like such a, you know, and it's a way of like how we process things, you know, yeah. I, I totally, you know, that's definitely how it is for me, you know. And, um, yeah, but it, you know, symbolically, it was almost a ripping apart of the old structure and the figurative, and after that, I went to Germany, the work um, became very um, primary colours, like very, a little bit more 
not darker but very colourful, um, very expressionistic in a way and um, figurative but also breaking up things already mm. and then this last body of work here is very um, there's not a lot of there is figures but only just you know traces of the figure here and there so there is a a moving in and a moving out between the two and I um, I had a conversation with a really good friend of mine um, you know, who's also a painter, and I had because I thought oh, I've got to decide. Like, I've got to, you know, am I a figurative painter or am I an abstract painter or what am I? Like, I need to know. Like, I have to choose a side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because like I need to have a style. I need to be, you know, um, predictable and I need to have a trajectory. And you know, mm -hmm. it's good for the CV and it looks good and you know, you like, have a trademark and everything. But it just felt completely wrong. Like, it just didn't feel yeah. right. Like, yeah. it just the inner impulse wasn't just said no, you know. And then I was like, well, I don't really have to decide at all. Yeah. And um, so I, you know, let myself surprise most of the time. You know, like people come into the studio and they often, you know, well, I talk to them or at exhibitions or shows and people ask me and say, so what's this about? And I said, well, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> you know, I probably know in a year. Or maybe in two years, you know. I mean, I do have like a a general kind of understanding or knowing what is happening, but sometimes it takes a long time to actually look at the work and then see, oh, this is what was actually going on. Do you do you find that you introduce elements to your practice that are out of your control in order to push the boundaries? Like random elements or what do you mean? What kind of elements? Uh, let me think. A few of the artists that I've interviewed have talked about how they look for certain, you know, strategically, certain ways of actually letting go of control mm. over what they're producing. Yes. In order to open up the possibilities for things that, you know, mm. are beyond what they're consciously uh, trying to pursue yes. in the yes, work. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Mm. Do you find that there's you know, that there's an element of that to your practice. Yeah. And in what form does it? Absolutely. Well, yeah. it it um it definitely happens um, often quite organically. So let's say mm. there is um you know I feel like in my hand when I draw or when I start painting, and you know and let's say I would like to. You know, my, my mind says, okay, we have to start over here, mm. but the feeling, the impulse is that it starts here, you know, and then suddenly there is this idea or an impulse of an animal, you know, and I think, well, I'm not an animal painter, you know, I really don't want this, I don't want this, why do I want to paint this when I don't yeah. want it? Yeah. So, and for me, um, one of the biggest things has been is to let go of the ego mm. in that way and to actually say, okay, well, I'm just going to go with that. I'm just going to see what happens. Yeah. Um, and especially with that last body of work, which is here now, but was started in Melbourne, um, I had a conversation with a friend and, and I said to her, look, all these faces are coming out. Like, why? I don't want them. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not, that's not what I do. I'm not a strange, you know, face painter. <laughs> like, I'm not a person that, you know, paints in strange faces. Like, look at these strange portraits. Why are they happening? Like, I don't want them. <laughs> and then, you know, she said to me, "Well, you know, you, you just you can't. Like, you can't resist. You just have to go with it. You just have to paint these strange faces." Yeah. And um, so I did. I just yeah. kind of, you know, but inside of me, I didn't really want it. I was like, "No, this is not what I want." So, so I guess it's an ongoing process of saying. Um, it's okay, you know, mm. whatever comes out. But I also, um, so it's like an inner barrier that I feel a lot with a lot of things. Like now there is ideas to, to do a big, to actually do an installation in here that, you know, where basically the whole room becomes an artwork. You mm. know? And there is a little bit of a, there's resistance to that as well. Because like, well, that's not what you usually do. But then I know I've got to do it. Yeah. So. 
but there is also preparation. So this room, it usually takes me maybe half an hour or an hour to get into the zone. So mm. there's certain things that I do of just sitting and coming down and I meditate as well to kind of really relax into, you know, what's, um, so that I have that state of mind to come into things. I clear the room as well. <laughs> do, do you work five days a week and come in on a regular no, time? No, no, no. So um, it's very much, um, so I'm not a painter that just works for shows. Yeah. So that's, that's not like, you know, some people, they just work for two, three months and then they don't work like, for another four months or something. Yeah. So I always work on something. So yeah. and if it's, um, if it's not in here, then it's, you know, at my place or wherever I am, you know, and it's a drawing or it's thinking about something or it's having ideas, but it's not um, five days a week. And I couldn't do it five days a week because mm. it just, you know, um, I mean, even though it is five days a week in a way, like internally, you know, there is never any stopping. Like it's, it's who I am, it's the life, right? Yeah, there is yeah. no, there is never a, um, you know, a point where I, you know, let's say I walk along the street or I talk to someone and I don't think, oh, that looks great. You know, oh, look at this. This is like an interesting shape or, you know, I look at a person and I think, oh, that'd be great visually. Mm. So that never stops.